Hello, my name is Edward Halepke, aka TechSciWill, and I'm here to present to you a security operations dashboard written in VMware vRealize login site. Now, before I go into it, I want to tell you why I put this together. I put it together um, starting many years ago, and that was to gain a view of activity of what's happening in my environment. Who's logging in? Who's doing what? Basically, the who did what, when, where, and why of my entire environment. When I put it together, I started realizing something. There are best practices for security that I can actually show inside of the, con the content pack. And that was the approach I was taking. Not only did I want to give activity, but I wanted to show best practices. So there's a lot of dashboards in the security operations. You can actually pick this up yourself at github.com slash techsiwill. You want to go into the VLI directory or repository. And you can download a zip file there and import it into your own login site and hook it in and plug it in. I won't go into how to do that. You can figure that out on your own. I also wrote about it on the README. All that's all taken care of. So what I'm going to show to you is a video of using this tool. This first screen that you're seeing is my environment. I'm just showing an hour's worth of data. And it's showing every user that's logged in to my environment who's done something. So I got activity at the vCenter level, and I got activity at the ESXi level. So I'm covering all of vSphere. Now, when you look at this over in the right-hand side, I should say, of the screen, you'll see a bunch of things that say v, uh, vSphere.local slash VLI. Well, that's login site itself, logging into my system. Generally, in that same screen, according to best practices, you never want to see administrator or root, so we basically alert on that. And that's on the left-hand side. But this is the general activity for about an hour worth of, my, of a test environment. So I'm going to start the video and highlight some of the things. This is the right-hand side I was talking about. Expanded it out. There's a few things in there that may be confusing. And then I can break it out by machine. Now, the next thing I did was wanted to put together a set of um, dashboards for, OK, I got a login logout event where the first one showed activity. This is the actual login logout event. Now, the interesting thing about that is what the data you get when you look at those events in the logs. You get some really interesting information about the API implications. So in this screen, all the way down, we were trying to figure out was how does this map from a login, logout event to what's happening on ESXi? And you can see that there's a progression down. Then I got alerts again if you're doing anything on administrator. Now I'm going to skip around a little bit. Many of these dashboards should be zero. There should be nothing on them. On a well-run environment, your system should not be changing immensely. Now, how often do you go off and uh, change the configuration on your ESXi host? Well, personally, I don't do that all that often. It's kind of you set it, you use it, you add on to it when you need to, but when you have a production environment, that doesn't happen all that often. So an hour's worth of data doesn't show me much, so I changed that to being still an hour's worth here. Now I'm showing remote consoles, I'm looking at data store browsers, and then I'm looking at things that are doing with permissions. Now, I'm going to change the time period on this one to be a longer time period so things take longer to run. But the reasons why I have these specific dashboards, specifically permission changes, is how often do you know your role ba whether your role-based access control is changing or not? So it becomes an interesting story about, hey, tell me what's changed. Tell me how things have changed. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. I'm going to do a custom time range of about a month. And I have some test code in here. As you can see, I have a couple of changes to my environment. Specifically, I gave someone permission, and then I removed it. I actually even gave someone administrative permissions. And then it's going to show up on the right-hand side. Now I'm looking at the file actions. Now this is an interesting dashboard as well because it's actually showing me events that are happening throughout my environment related to the dashboard, the data store browser, I should say. The data store browser, again, is one of those things that people should not be touching on a regular basis. 
that's best practices for virtualization, specifically vSphere security, but it's also the best practices for any hypervisor. Going direct to the hypervisor or downloading data off of it is not something you want to do regularly. It's a break glass situation, so we wanted to show what was happening. So I have on the left-hand side of this particular dashboard, those things I can see in vCenter, delete, upload, download, and on the right-hand side, I'm looking actually at the actual action happening on ESXi. So those activities, I got multiple layers I have to put together. Set that run a little bit longer. I'm actually going to speed that one up too. As you can see, even an hour's worth of data can take a long time to run. And that's because, I mean, this isn't an hour, I'm sorry, a month's worth of data is a lot of data to go through. So you need a large cluster to handle this, or a can. This is a smaller environment, so I just took the time. I have no problem with that. Again, the key here is, is that these are elements of a security operations dashboard that allows you to see the activity that's happening inside of your environment. There's three best practices really here. One is no one should be using the data store browser directly. No one should be really changing permit role-based access control to allow administrator for everybody. And the third one is no one should be using the remote console directly. Those are best practices that been do documented for years. So the next dashboard I'm going to show you is the actual one for the remote console. This is three different logins to the remote console, who did it and what machines are accessing. So you're able to see who's doing what. Now, what I would do with this data is very different. I would go and say, okay, why is this data here? Who did this? And then, why did they do this? In each case here, it was a break glass situation. I had to actually get to the console to get I figure out IP or change an IP, basically unreachable VMs. So you only have one way to modify those and manage those. And I could redeploy or I could actually do it this way. So there's reasons for using all of this. and There's reasons for the best practices. It's really now a case of I can take this data, give it to my security people and say, hey, this is what happened, this is why it happened. Instead of them coming to me and saying, you can't do that, there are reasons for every doing everything. When you start thinking about what's going on here, now I got a change of events that are happening over time. This is a VM configuration change. And the reason why I want to track this is to find out who's changing my environment underneath the covers. In this case, it's Veeam. It's a, it's a data protection tool. It actually has to do change block tracking and turn that on. It has to add the disk and to turn that on. So I'm now seeing what is happening internally to my environment that I normally would not see. And that's a key part of security operations, is really just getting that view of activity. So I'm going to go backwards here and go back to the first screen here on the video. When you think about how I can use this data, I now have to think about who's going to consume this data. For me, it was I wanted to get activity because I'm concerned about security. This is a bridge, or could be used as a bridge, to talk to your security team and says, hey, from an auditing perspective, who's doing what? Well, I now know who's doing what. I know who's logged in, and I can trace back by click, um, clicking into this and saying, hey, give me the full list and tell me what's happening. So now I can do that. So the activity gives you the ability to go to the security team and talk auditing. You're now using their language, and this is a nice bridge tool. But it also allows you to say, hey, am I meeting best practices? It's very visual, and it gives you that immediate impact. Now, people have taken this and put it in their environment. Mine's pretty well run, pretty static. Other people's are all over the map. And this is why you want this. You want to figure out, what am I not doing right? One of the things, of, uh, one of the best practices that I wanted to show on the, the, this original one, by the way, the, the first two, um, this one, and a few others have been there since the beginning of time from when I started this. The reason why I put this in is I wanted to ensure that the users I was seeing was that there was one user per service. I didn't want everybody logging in using administrator or root. I wanted one user per service, and I have a lot of services. This is just a small portion of them. If I went for a year or a month, I would see 30, maybe 40 different users. NSX is a service. 
View as a service. Log Insight as a service. V Realize Operations as a service. I have several third-party services. Everyone gets their own user. So this allows me to show what's happening at all levels. And that's how I started. Thank you for listening. Again, you can find this at github.com slash will. If you have any questions, find me as will on Twitter, on, well, just about anywhere, and you're glad, I'll gladly answer any of your questions. Thank you very much.